Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge. Hi, Matthew. Hi. I was waiting for Nate to usher me in. Well, yeah, Nate. Nate's not doing his job well, today. No, that and uh, our intern has uh, a relationship problem, so she was asking Matthew uh, for advice. You know what, Matthew? When you visit, it's like when Dr. Oz oh, visits. Oh, forget it. Like, the, the other day, Dr. Oz was here, and <laughs> one of our interns walked up. She pulled uh, her left pant leg up, and there was, like, this massive bloody wound. She's like, what do you think of this? I'm like, uh, would you <laughs> Leave the doctor we alone. We pull our pants down and bend over. Yeah. Dr. Not, Ross, what's this? I've, I have a hernia uh, uh, right up here. Can you? Do, and I also have like a hemorrhoid thing. And some people bend over in front of him. So it's not fair for you, who are an expert in relationships, to have everyone like get in line and start asking you questions. Well, actually, what was said? Who's the lovely lady outside who asked me a question? Was it uh, Samantha? Samantha? Yeah. Um, Samantha actually touched on something that... I was I wanted to talk about today because oh, she good. said my love life is in a shambles. Well, let's talk about. Can we bring her in? Yeah. Uh, did, does she want to talk about her love life in a shambles? <laughs> oh, I'm so, I feel bad now because I've thrown her under the bus. Well, no, but if she doesn't want she, to go here's on. What, here's what she said to me. She said my love life is in shambles, and I said why? What's going on? I said is that because you don't have anyone, or because you have someone and it's a nightmare? Yeah. And she said a bit of both. And I feel, I sort of feel like that's half of the country. Right. Uh, the relationship's good, but you ask me in an hour, it's bad. Yeah. Or the relationship isn't really a relationship. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing this thing. What, what are you doing with a guy right now? A thing. A okay. thing. Okay. Well, by, by the way, by the way, before you get started with this, you don't have to talk about this on the radio. I'm it, fine. Okay. Oh, it's, wow. I mean, you're, you're an intern here. You're still going to pass with flying colors. <laughs> <laughs> so, Samantha, Samantha's I'm here. I'm getting a free session, so it's cool. <laughs> so, well, we use the word complimentary. Yeah. Because the word free is so cheap and tawdry. Yeah, complimentary is a lot more and fancy. Not, I'm not cheap and tawdry, am I, Elvis? Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, fair but, enough. But in a, like a sexy way. All right, so, so Samantha pulled you aside on the way in, Matthew, and what did she say to you? She said, my, my love life is in a shambles. And I said, why? Is that because you haven't got anyone or because you've got someone and it's kind of a nightmare? She said both. <laughs> so what's the situation? Um, it's like, you know the word situationship? Yeah. Times a million. So he's not committing to you? No. Well, explain that. Explain that. What does that mean to you? So to me, okay, so we've been on and off for like the past three years. Right. And there's been no commitment, but it was like, it's, it was unspoken kind of. Huh. So. What does that time, mean? Like. It, we, it was supposed to be okay with no commitment at first, but I felt like maybe after a certain amount of time, it would start to move forward. So you pretended you were more okay with being casual than you really were. Yeah, and then I turned psycho because I tried to hold it in for so long. Yeah. And then and then you built up all this resentment. Yeah. And then how did psycho come out in that moment? How did you, how did you go off the rails when you suddenly it built up to a breaking point? What did you do? I just screamed, I'm not doing this anymore. Right. With a few more words that I can't say on radio. <laughs> but... hey, you know what? May I, may, I, may I just say something? You didn't go psycho. You did what any of us in our right mind would have done. You're fine. Okay. You know, I, I don't. First of all, don't think that you're odd man out for reacting or responding the way you did. Seriously. I just felt like it was psycho because it's so different from the normal chill that I usually am. Good. Yeah. Sometimes we need a kick in yeah, the ass, and maybe that's what he needs. But go ahead. I... I... Ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> you went you went psycho. I listen, here's the thing for you. This situation wasn't working for you. You held it in because you were afraid to ask a question that had an answer you were afraid of. So you what was avoided, the question? Say the it question loud. was, what are we? Where is this going? Are you ever actually gonna take this thing seriously? Is there any chance you're actually going to commit or are we gonna do this dance forever? <laughs> Right? Exactly. Yeah. And you didn't want the answer. So you didn't ask the question. Well, at first, then I did ask, and then I got uh, questions that helped me prolong. I mean, I got answers that helped me prolong. So, what, so I, I, I always love the things that guys say. What did he say to prolong it? <laughs> yeah, what little snack did he give you? you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Snack, snack. And, and by the way, women do this too. It's not just a of guy course, thing. Of okay, course. Go ahead. So, um... He lives, uh, I guess, the best way to describe it is an unstable lifestyle, like moving around and stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, if you've been around throughout everything, that should be enough. Wow. Oh, meaning that when he's moving from place to place, he still has you around. Right. So you should be satisfied right. with the fact that he hasn't gotten rid of you. Right. Right. <laughs> so he's so he's lowering your expectations. A little bit. Right. A lot and bit. hoping that you'll buy into that. Yeah, I can, I can assume you know, that's what's going on. Matthew, there. it sounds like she's in like a really long fling. Well, that is the story of relationships right now. What is that? Is that people are in these long-term situations with people that they're not actually in a relationship with. 
And I, I, I here's the question I pose to people because I think it's coming up all the time right now is how do you get over someone you never really dated? Hmm. And there are tons of people right now who are grieving someone that they never had. I think there are four stages of like importance in a relationship and e we have to give each one its proper place because a lot of us are crying over something we shouldn't be crying about. There's admiration. That's just when there's some hot person around who you really like. They've got great qualities. You, you, you're really into them and you're like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with this person. Well, this is, this is kind of silly. Because this person may not even know you exist, may not even know, may not have any attraction toward you, but you've made them really important. That's admiration. Right. The next one's chemistry. Chemistry is when there's actually a mutual attraction, right? And plenty of people are convincing themselves that it's so sad that they're not with someone that they have mutual attraction with. Well, that's not important either, because you so, can have mutual attraction with tons of people. Right. So, so far, Samantha, these two uh, apply for you in, the, in this person. Um, I don't think so. Oh, I don't wow, you've already already you're you're okay. Go ahead. Let's I think go. I think we've gone beyond both of those. Okay, okay, so so here's so here's the third stage of importance, right? It's not chemistry because chemistry isn't a good indicator of like, oh, you're going to be a great partner to me. This the third one is commitment. Right. I admire you. We have chemistry and you're willing to commit to me and I'm willing to commit to you. That's the third stage. Now, that's an important stage. He's not got there. I was going to say that we're, we're dancing on a yeah, thin exactly. line between stage two and three. Exactly. <laughs> and then the fourth stage is I admire you. We have chemistry. We're committed and we're compatible. You love me the way I want to be loved and I'm able to love you the way that I want to love. Mm. And so few people have that. And what I'm seeing everywhere is people crying over somebody as if they were in stage four, but they're not. But I have a question. If maybe you're not in stage four, but that doesn't, that doesn't take away from maybe you feel something so deep that you feel like maybe at least you yourself was connected to them. Okay, more than so they let me were. so let me ruin that for everyone. Okay, okay good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, uh -oh. Matthew. <laughs> Let me tell you about the castle, okay? Oh, I had the castle. The castle, yeah. The castle. <laughs> I had a live event for women in Dublin, and there was a woman there who said, I am, she said, you have to help me. I am obsessed with this guy. I'm so in love with him. He's so perfect for me. We have such a great, I said, what's the problem? He's in a relationship. Oh. I said, okay. Now, to be fair to this woman, she wasn't trying to break him and his girlfriend up. She, she was basically asking me, how do I get over this guy? How do I stop okay. feeling so much? Like you said, Danielle, how do I stop feeling yeah. so much for this person who's not giving me what I want? Right. I think of chemistry and connection, which is the thing we all overvalue, as two people coming to a plot of land. This plot of land has a lot of potential. Maybe it's on the hillside. Maybe it's next to a lake. Maybe it's got a beautiful forest view. It's an amazing place to build. Now, it's still just a plot of land, right? That's all it is. Now what you need is two builders. You need two people who actually are willing to construct a castle together. And that takes time and it takes effort and it takes investment and it takes two people who really want to do it. And as you build the castle, it becomes more and more beautiful. It becomes more and more yours. There are secret passageways no one else knows about, rooms, places in that castle that are beautiful over time the weather starts to erode the stone in beautiful and unique ways that make that castle unlike any other castle in the world because it's yours you can't build a castle on your own and i see people everywhere right now that woman she's talking about this guy and thinking about him and investing in him right the same way you are right now and here's what that is is you on a plot of land hammering and you're doing it on your own. Meanwhile, there's some builder who's gone AWOL, who's not even there. And when a guy sends a text and says six weeks later, thinking of you, and he's barely been around, that's the equivalent of a builder calling into the construction site going, how's the castle going? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you're there building the castle. It doesn't work like that. People have to start valuing the castle over the connection because the connection you can find again, but a castle that's worth something. And a castle you can only get by finding a genuine builder. You don't have a builder. You just have a connection. Wow. Wow. Okay. 
Another way to look at it. So are you going to call him today and say, I don't want to do this anymore? (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to build a castle with you. (laughs) I do love your hammering sound effect. (laughs) To to the point where, you know, in a relationship with someone, you build a castle with them, and then you build a moat around it to keep all the assholes (laughs) out. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. So now we have two of Matthew Hussey's deals. We have the The butterfly, butterfly and and now we have the the castle. The butterfly and the castle. I love that. Well, so that's the thing. So It's true, though. I know, but what you do is you keep looking for signs that that person that you're waiting for to come around is about to come around. And just when you think he's about to come around, he doesn't, I'm assuming. I don't Um, know. Yes, somewhat. Because in his defense, he's like not a bad person at all. He's like great with family and everything. But that's think, what makes him so dangerous, by the way. Ooh. What? I, I think so. Because it's, so. it's easy to ditch someone who's mean to you. Right. Right. But someone who's actually not a bad person will slowly ruin your life forever. Wow. Damn, Matthew. <laughs> well, because you let them. It's the truth. Because listen, listen, I had another woman. I was in Sydney recently. I had a woman in my seminar in Sydney who said to me, when we have conversations, I've been, she said, literally, I've been doing this dance with a guy for two and a half years. He won't commit. We're just in this casual thing. She said, when I'm with him and we talk about it and he talks about how he can't commit properly, he cries. Like, oh. he gets upset. It's, now, that's because he knows that he's not strong enough to walk away. He doesn't enjoy hurting someone he cares about by not giving her what she actually wants. So he feels like crap all the time. Right? He's not happy, but he's also not strong enough to leave. And that's why you have to be strong enough. Because he's not going to be strong enough to do what you need to do for your life. So you don't think that you can like teach someone to be a builder? No, here's, here's the thing. You have to create stakes. Real stakes. Because the moment that you're staying there and, no one, and someone feels like you're still going to be there no matter what, it's like that's, that all you're doing is giving drugs to a drug addict. Right. You're just continuing that cycle because he's addicted right now. He doesn't want to leave. Life's easier when you're around and he will allow you to do this for as long as you let him. Right. Your time is not as precious to him as it is to you. And I like, listen, I know it's heavy. What is it? Eight in the morning. We're going (laughs) to die. Wow. We're going to die. No, we (laughs) We (laughs) built a castle and now we're going to die. No, we're going to die. We don't have the time we think we do. And we're all going around in these, in these relationships where we've allowed someone to barter us down to something we never wanted in the first place, right? Because we don't feel we're worth something more. I always think about in a marketplace, what happens when someone says, this is a hundred bucks and you say, I'll give you 70 for it. And they say, okay, that's because it wasn't worth a hundred yeah. in the first place, right. right? But if someone tells you, if I say I'm worth a thousand bucks and you say 800, I say, screw that. Yeah. I'm not doing it because I know my worth. And the reason men aren't taking women seriously and vice versa is because people aren't taking themselves seriously, right? They don't think that they're worth something more. So they stay in something that they're not happy with because they think that's what they deserve. But this guy right now, no matter how great he is, and he could have the best intentions, by the way, and still be selfish. He could have the best intentions and still ruin your life. That's the truth. It doesn't have to be a bad person, and that's what will really mess you up. He's a nice guy. I don't want to give you the impression he's a bad guy. He's, he's a nice guy. He might be a nice guy. It doesn't mean he's not going to ruin your life, right? Because you are, you're going to allow him to waste your time. And anyone who's not really committing to you, by the way, is not giving you their best. You don't even know what he's like in a real relationship. That's the truth. You don't know what he can actually be. True. Right? Because when someone, when a man suddenly decides, I'm going to give everything, this is it, I'm going to go all in, he's a different person. Mm-hmm. So you're, now you're, you're dealing with someone who's not even giving you 100%. He's giving you 60% maybe at best, and you're taking that. Meanwhile, someone who's right for you is losing years with you right now. Wow. Wow. They're losing time with you. Life Damn. is not life, <laughs> life is not long enough when you find the right person. So Samantha came in today. A I'll reality think I'll, check. I think I'll just go into the show and do my internship today, not knowing the Damn. avalanche would fall. Well, look. So you you heard a lot. Process it. You know. And build a cemetery behind the castle. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha, all the best to you. Thank you. I'm going to need the good luck. <laughs> no, no, you have it. You, oh, you have you have everything already on board. You are already wired for success. You just gotta you gotta push the right button. And, and Samantha, remember, because trust me, I want you to go away. I want I'm gonna give everyone a mission right now, listening to this show. I want you to go and have the conversation you've been avoiding. And if someone doesn't give you the answer you want, you leave. 
I'm going to do it today. That's it. Do it today and listen. Listen to me because tomorrow you'll already doubt it. You'll get freaked out. He'll text you. He'll say something sweet and loving and you'll feel the need to respond. I want you to remember, just because it hurts, it doesn't mean it was the wrong decision. So one more time, the, uh, the mission for everyone today is to have the conversation. Have the conversation with the person that you know is not giving you their all. You know is not actually committing to you. And, and by the way, you, can ha- you don't have to have it in a crazy emotional way. One of the greatest things, I'm a big fan of like charming candor. Like be, be honest with someone, but still be charming. Still be attractive. You're not sure what you want? Okay, I get it. You're not sure what you want. I can't make you sure. I think you're great. I think you're awesome. And by the way, there are plenty of women out there who will go and do the casual thing with you or will accept this from you because guess what? You're hot and you're attractive and you're great. Right? That's why I like you. You've got all these great qualities. But I like myself more to be in a situation where someone's not actually meeting my needs. So you could, like, you should go and do that, but you should find someone to do it with, and there will be people who do it with you. I'm just not one of them. That's a wonderful letdown. You see what you did there? <laughs> By the way, let's just, let's just break that down for a second. What did you do? You complimented him as you ditched him. <laughs> you said you're great. And not I hate you. I got, I got no hatred towards you. I don't hate you. You're great. And someone is going to do this with you. But it's not me. And now, all of a sudden, you elevate yourself above everyone else in the world he can go and find right now. Because he's like, well, but wait. I want you. Well, look. I want to go all in. Because I'm excited. I'm excited about the journey. Honestly, it's boring to be with someone who's doubting it constantly. That's just boring. I want to be with someone who's actually excited about where we're going. Right? So if that's not you, great. That's wonderful. And I appreciate you telling me now. Because you just saved me so much time. I appreciate you for that. But I go, go. And then you turn around and you do that walk. I have to when twitch really away. hard, but oh make God. it still look natural. That's right. And, and for anyone who's doing this today, by the way, I have a guide for you. I literally created a guide that's completely complimentary that gives you three ways to get over the heartache oh, wait, of wait, leaving wait, wait, someone. I want to go to this wow. right now. Where is this? Let's three secrets to love.com three seconds or secrets? three secrets to love.com okay. and this is going to help you not only move on from a past situation but, the number but three, go out there and find the, the right word situation three. uh the the number three.